What's up guys, welcome back to another video. It's your boy Zay. In today's video, we're gonna try and get the daily up and running again, and then go ahead and give you guys an update on the FRS and how the FRS is going, so stay tuned. So, we currently have the vlog that is dropping today going. Um, so this video is the one where we did about Mike's STI install, and then we have the tool set up, we have the daily, the Volkswagen Cabrillo, so I do believe that the problem is with the water pump. If you guys have watched the last video, that may be the new issue. As you guys can see, we have some coolant leaking for whatever reason because we did replace that flange, but now coolant is leaking in another spot, so we're gonna figure that out. And then with the FRS over here. All right, so nothing too crazy is going on with the FRS. Um, for those that of you that don't know, I am static, I am on. BC coilovers with 326 three, power springs. Um, this is my ride height all the time. I don't air up. I don't have bags. No, I will never go bags, especially for this car. But being this low and how, I, how it's driven, um, I did rip off the side skirt. I do have the blue painter's tape holding it up. Maybe in today's video we can get a self tap in there. But that's not my main focus for today. Um, for those that don't know, this is a big Airwolf end plate. The end plate was pretty cool, but the other day when I was driving it, because the Cabrillo was down, I don't know how this happened, but the end plate broke. This is a fiberglass end plate. Um, it's held by two bolts, but as you guys can see, everything came out. I don't know if it was pulled on or it hit something, but we might do another video on how to fix that. If you guys would like that, go ahead and leave a comment down below, but if I do fix it, what color should I wrap or paint it? Since it's summertime and it's too hot to be in the asphalt, I'm going to do all the work in the garage and driveway. I do have the ramps holding the car back just in case I don't want it to roll. And then we got the jack ready to go on the pinch weld. Here we go. Ready there. And let's see if we can finally get this POS working today, boys. I have faith in this car. I really do. Before we go any further, I do want to say a huge shout out to Susweeb. Susweeb is a car clothing brand on Instagram and I believe Twitter, but huge shout out to the homie. He's a super cool dude. I will leave his Instagram and all his information down in the description below. And if you guys do go, if you guys do buy anything from Susweeb, go ahead and leave him a comment saying that they sent you or that just go show him some love. I would appreciate it, but let's go ahead and get back to the Cabrillo. All right, boys, so we have the wheel off. We have the catch pen ready. I already have this catch pen ready because I already know this fucking car is gonna leak on me. Fuck, I swear to God, car. But hopefully with removing this and we can see for the water pump and the ther uh, thermostat and all that stuff, we can see where this leak's coming from. Hopefully it's just a hose and I gotta replace the whole water pump. But if I gotta replace the whole water pump, then that means that's just more content for you guys and more of a pain in the ass for me. All right car's back on everything seems to be going fine and we already do have some Gatorade flowing please do not drink any green liquids from your car you will regret it all right the best way I'm gonna attack this is exactly the same way as if I was replacing the thermostat um, I do have to take off one of the brackets the power steering line over here and then I have to take off a couple of these bolts but first what I'm gonna do is just so when I'm getting all this done and removing stuff that coolant doesn't start falling everywhere, I'm going to get the catch pan and then I'm going to remove the antifreeze from the radiator and clean that out and make sure that it's flush and it's not brown or any discoloration or anything like that. We already got the leak going. Let's see if... No. Oh, this is gonna be disgusting. 
So what I did was I pulled this bottom hose connection that goes to the radiator all the way through to the thermostat and the water pump and most of the antifreeze is in there but as you guys can see it doesn't have like the most greenish look to it. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. Some of it was brown so we're gonna go ahead and let that drain out but as you guys can see that it's leaking from there and everything's going out and hopefully it'll be easier for us to go ahead and take all that apart. There you guys have it. The antifreeze is all drained out from the radiator hose that is connected. We do have to get the power steering pump out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna be using a 13 millimeter. Go ahead and take all these off and then the adjuster will let all this drop and then hopefully we can get to the thermostat that is way back there. And shout out to Volkswagen for making this such a complicated issue. This thing literally had no thread. I literally just took it out and Jesus Christ. 30 year old car with 30 year old issues. Gotta get the long boat out, boys. The big daddy. Oh, I literally have no stabilization. If anyone wants to be a cameraman for free, I'll pay you for free. All right, let's go ahead and get this big old pivot screw out. Yep, that happened. And I'm just gonna go in here. Don't die! We're good, boys. We didn't cut the yellow wire. All right. Let's get that because we don't want to lose that. All right, so we have this off, this off. Hose is disconnected. We have the adjustable over here and then the pivot screw from up top is now out. So hopefully we can get this power string pump out of here because the thermostat's back there. And then our leak's over there. It's still a big old puzzle, but hopefully we figured it out today, boys. If you guys are liking the video so far, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'd appreciate it. So right here, this is the tension screw. What this does is it controls, as you guys can see, this is not tight. Thank God it's not tight, so. Hey, we broke that person's neck with the slow roll. Just kidding. But that tension bolt is what makes all this tight and loose. Now this is loose, it's gonna be easy to take off and then figure out what's our issue back there. All right, so the cable is off. The power steering pump is almost done. Like I said, you just need to go ahead and still take off this bolt right here that is connection connected for tension and as soon as that falls out this will be ready to fall out of place so i figured i'd give you guys a side view of what it looks like hopefully you can clear up there it goes so this is the tension part as you tighten it goes up up more 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 or all the way down and that's how tight your cable will be so if it's all the way up here it's not going to be the tightest once it's right where you want it as you guys can kind of see like the original tie-in bolt area from the rust and erosion and all stuff that's where the cable is going to be at but i figured i'd just give you guys a side view see what you're looking at i know it'd be a different perspective like what the hell is he talking about but this is exactly what i'm talking about this is where your cable is at it's here here and here and then it connects it runs all the way through and then your timing belt is right here connected to your block all right so uh there we go the nut is out and see if i can go over here oh good god I think I owe myself a hundred bucks because I just ate antifreeze. <laughs> but cool, it's out. Just gonna disconnect these this hose and then gonna disconnect this and this will be out. And then we're getting closer to what our problem is over here. We're gonna figure it out today, boys. We really are. Felt cute, might delete later. No, I'm just playing. So actually, the car that was slow rolling was a homie. So a huge shout out to the homie. I took a break for a minute and talked to him, but back to the car. If like I said, I don't know what I'm doing, boys. That's the core of this channel. I don't know what I'm doing. I am not going to disconnect this, actually. I'm actually just going to leave this out of the way, hanging. But good thing that we have the catch pan going, because if not, we would have to... I'm going to take this off. This is where the thermostat's at, behind this bracket right here. And this is actually where our issue is, right here. Like I said earlier, from the upward view I showed you guys, this is where I feel like it's a bad seal. And that's where we're leaking from. But I'm gonna take this off anyway. It's gonna be a 10 mil bolt and show you guys the thermostat. And hopefully we're gonna figure out if it's just a bad gasket or what this is, why it's leaking. So like I said, 
thankfully we have this catch pen going because as soon as we take off these two bolts, a little more antifreeze might just come out. Oh, you're just not having it today, are you? I'm just gonna take this out. And then hopefully this just... <laughs> so that just goes to prove that I do not know what I'm doing, but that's okay, that's how we learn. And I do got a tingly sensation in my mouth because antifreeze. So we're gonna continue the video and hopefully we still figure out the problem and hopefully I do not drown again. All right, so we have both bolts out and after getting splashed in the face, the thermostat should just fall right out. You're looking at a brand new 1990 Volkswagen thermostat. I did replace this a couple months ago, so that's why it looks almost brand new. But this is not, well, so that kind of gave you a breakdown on how to replace your thermostat. You get a new one, pop back in there. But that's not why we're doing this video. This video is to wonder why this sealant just keeps leaking. So is it erosion or what? But we're gonna figure it out. All right guys, so we come to a little uh, stump in the road. Um, so unfortunately to take off that piece that I was looking at that was sealed, I'm gonna have to mess with the timing belt and some other housings. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna do some research because I do not wanna mess with that stuff. But if you guys did like today's video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the do-it-yourselves and learning. Um, I do appreciate it, but this is probably gonna be a two-part series because I am going to figure this out but I just want to do some more research before I just jump right into it because as we clearly can see I don't know what I'm doing that's a new quote for this channel but like I said I do appreciate it guys but with all this being said no matter how far you get in life to always remain humble and always try to make a difference